Good evening and welcome. Throughout the day, we've been looking at the union budget. Is it a budget for everyone? What are the big highlights? Well, there's a big capex spend. There's a huge investment in our green transition. There's a big change. If you want it to be a change, as far as tax is concerned, personal income tax, what does it all mean? We'll be looking at all of those details over the next one hour. And of course, we'll be looking at the political fallout as well. Remember, this is the last big budget of the government ahead of next year's general elections. And let me introduce our first two guests tonight. We have Mr. Amitabh Kant, uh, India's Sherpa for the G20. Also, Dr. Amit Mitra, uh, advisor to the West Bengal Chief Minister. Uh, and, and wonderful to have both of you on the program with us. Uh, Amitabh Kant, wanted to begin by asking you, I think many were wondering whether this would end up being a populist budget because it is the last big budget ahead of the general elections. And it's actually turned out to be quite the opposite of that, very much focused on looking at growth uh, and, and obviously then therefore generating employment, etc. Uh, tell us more about that in terms of its vision. Uh, is the government therefore looking at a more long-term ap approach on getting India's growth back, back on track? Uh, so, Nidhi, uh, you know, this budget is all about uh, good governance being good politics. Uh, it's, uh, this budget really demonstrates that uh, the government wants to take India on a long-term trajectory of growth, uh, largely because of uh, several features in the budget. One is that it uh, leaves a lot of cash in the hands of individuals through direct taxes. And that, that means that you're trying to drive consumption. And when you drive consumption in the economy, you're trying to push uh, demand. And demand, in turn, will lead to greater amount of capacity utilization. And capacity utilization will lead to fresh investments in your economy. And therefore, you'll uh, stimulate the virtuous cycle of private sector investment in the economy. A second is a very huge capex third year in a row and this year by a whopping 33 percent. So you are trying to build a, a new India in terms of infrastructure, a new airports, 50 new airports, uh, 2.4 lakh on railways, nine times more than the outlay which was in 2013-14, a huge amount of outlays for roads. So you are building a completely new India there. And the third key thing to my mind is a huge focus on going digital across every sector and going green, which is very, very important if India has to uh, sustain its growth in an environmentally friendly manner. Uh, and this is very critical because border tax will set in in 2026 from Europe. And if you want to export, you need to go green in a very big way. But I think the remarkable feature of this budget is really a huge focus on cutting edge technology in every single sector, whether it's electric mobility, green hydrogen, battery storage, pump storage, all these cutting or, uh, you know, uh, three centers of excellence for artificial intelligence or 100 labs for 5G. It sounds uh, great. Uh, it sounds Massive great. amount of technological break. I, I just want to ask Dr. Amit Mitra that what Amitabh Kant is saying and what, you know, what the finance minister says actually sounds pretty terrific. Uh, you know, in terms of its aims and, and, and what they've laid out. So what is your primary criticism of the budget, Dr. Mitra? I think it's very important that if somebody fought an election and had a grassroots experience, they would see the world very differently in a more balanced manner than what I just heard. Uh, let me start by saying, what is the current problem that a government is facing? Today, you have approximately 3.7 crores, that's 37 million people unemployed. And you have 1.2 crores, that's 12 million people who have given up searching for jobs. Now, you multiply that by five dependents per person, you're talking about a humongous number of people who are distressed, families are distressed. A budget will immediately try to address that. Now, I didn't even hear of the unemployment uh, during the discourse. Let me go to the second issue. Where do they fall back when they don't have a job? They fall back on 100 days work. That has been the major development of India for the last decade. What has happened to that? The budget from 89,000 crores, 89,400 crores, cut the, uh, the money for the 100 days work 
down to 60,000 crores. But these are the poorest people who, for livelihood and for survival, take advantage of the 100 days work. Third, what has happened to inflation? How does it affect you and me? Relatively, it affects the poor people in my constituencies that I have dealt with. Okay. Now, take, for example, milk, 8.51% increase. Uh, if spices, 20% increase. So that's the third. And the last point I'll make on this is there is a 90% of employment given in this country by the unorganized sector. They produce maybe between 40 to 50% of GDP. Not a single word on that. And they don't have health. They don't have social security. They don't have education. So what is interesting is a budget would first try to handle an immediate issue, balance it by handling a long-term gestation period issue, sure. which comes from capital investment. Okay, Dr. Mitra, I get, the, I get the point that you're, you're, you're saying. Amitabh Khan, the key word over there, unemployment. Has anyone, has enough been done to address that? So Vishnu, how do you create jobs in an economy? Do you do that by distributing poverty? You need to stimulate growth in an economy. You need to put India on a high trajectory growth over a long period of time. How do you create jobs? By putting resources into capital investments. The more it has a huge multiplier impact. And the more, if you're putting in uh, 10 lakh crore in infrastructure, the capex spend will be enormous. And then you're asking the states to utilize the 1.3 lakh crore in, again, in capital investment during the next one year. So the Im impact will be enormous in terms of job creation. And in addition to all this, look at the amount of focus in terms of agriculture, in terms of animal husbandry, in terms of fisheries, in terms of uh, creating a completely new skilling in a vast range of new areas of growth. So my view is very clear that jobs will come if India grows. Jobs will come if India, we are able to create a new infrastructure in India. Jobs, good quality jobs will come if you do good urbanization in India. Go jobs will come if you drive tourism in India. All that is a very major focus and emphasis in today's budget. Okay. The, Dr. Amit Mitra, the, uh, you uh, know, when, when you say that, uh, you know, the opposition is saying that this is not a pro-people budget in that sense and pro-poor in particular, but le let's say you look at the tax slabs today. Um, and, and the options that people have been given in terms of these tax exemptions, etc. You don't think that that is something the salaried class would welcome? No, I think salaried class would welcome. But remember, Nidhi, that you know, when you're going from 5 lakh to 7 lakhs, inflationary factors eat up part of this. But let me come back to this question. How do you create jobs? Everybody, those who understand macroeconomics and have studied macroeconomics, they know the idea is to put money into the hands of the people immediately. This is what the whole world is doing. Parallelly, you take a long-term gestation period, which takes time for infrastructure and other things. That's the second. Third is private sector then, according to this government, uh, you want the private sector to come in and you crowd in There's a new term they've discovered. What do they find in the private sector? 70% capacity utilization, which means they're not going to buy new plant, new machinery. So you have Keynesian stimulation on one side, which is by giving money into the hands of the people, which USA, UK, Japan, Germany, you name it, everybody has done. But we don't do it. We follow the Ronald Reagan model called the supply side model. What problem with that creates is this five crore people wait while we hear lectures or this will happen and that will happen. You have to do both. You have to walk on both feet. This budget misses that opportunity of helping those who need to come back into the market, those who are looking for jobs come back into the market, 100 days work come back into the market. Parallelly, you do a long-term process and the private sector is waiting. Not a single businessman in your show or any other television show today said they're going to invest. They haven't invested last year. Quietly no, I think that's an important cut. point, Dr. Mitra. And um... no, Let me add, Vishnu, let me add, they took the tax cut given last year that went into their profits. Sure. So the middle of, middle of the pandemic, highest profit 
in four years was made in India because it was simply transferred into the books. Yeah. And therefore, it became profit. Now, that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for stimulation, macroeconomic stimulation, followed by, in the next step, followed by animal spirit, which okay. only comes when there's excess demand. So all the business people on your shows are saying, there is no excess demand. All right. What is the point of this big talk okay, about this Dr. and Mitchell, that? Let me, get, let me get Amitabh Kant in on this. Two points. Firstly, you know, 100 days of work, the Manrega scheme, the point that's been mentioned is that, uh, or, or which Dr. Mitra alluded to, is that A, that amount has actually gone down. B, even if you look at over the last few years of it having gone up, the problem which has arisen is that inflation has kicked in and therefore, the actual gain to people who need the amount allotted by Manrega, uh, it, it's become less significant. Number one, that still is an important scheme, has enough been done to actually sustain it. And number two, the larger issue, which he says that has this government balanced its futuristic vision of what India needs to be with this reality where people are still hungry? Uh, so let me uh, respond to this, uh, Vishnu. Uh, I have the greatest regard for Mr. Mitra, but I would beg to greatly differ from him. He's advocating uh, similar uh, philosophy as many uh, advanced countries had done during the COVID period, uh, created a lot of liquidity, and that has led to inflation, and that has impacted the common citizens across the world. You've seen the tightening of... Uh, uh, the dollar in United States, the sucking out of the liquidity that had happened, it has led to huge amount of inflation and that has impacted global economy in the long run. So never make the mistake again of what has been done in the past. It's very, very important to put liquidity into the hands of people through tax breaks, which has been done. And throughout this COVID period, we supported over 800 million people by putting resources directly into their bank account or providing food to them. Nowhere in the world was this done. Okay. Right. And uh, secondly, my belief is uh, my my belief is that the that the real great. Uh, instrument for driving jobs, et cetera, is through actual capital investments. The capital investment creates the best quality jobs. It's not Manrega, it's capital investment. But that will have a multiplier impact on your economy. You are not yeah, thinking also. of today or tomorrow. You are thinking of a three-decade period, a long-term vision of taking India to be a developed economy by 2047. You can't do this by Menrega. You need to do this yeah. through top-class quality on, on investment. The issue of capital but, but also, let me say... Yeah, sorry, I'm just interrupting because on the yeah. issue of capital but, but expenditure, let me also what, what, what the government had budgeted last year... That target has not been entirely met yeah. uh, also, and yet it's gone up by 33% this year. So I think the question is, is that yes, will we be yeah. able to utilize this yeah. money? No, no, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that the government will utilize it. This requires a lot of hard work. This requires a lot of project structuring. This requires a lot of uh, process of uh, due diligence, uh, land acquisitions, etc., putting all the approvals in place. But I'm quite sure that the government will ensure that this money is totally spent. But if you want to take India on the growth trajectory, then this is the way forward. It's not the Manrega route forward. I think we should absolutely be clear that we want to create good quality jobs for our citizens of India, not poor uh -huh. quality jobs. And that would require in, in investment also in urbanization. That right. would also it's, require it's, investment it's, in travel and tourism. Dr. Mitra wants Dr. to Mitra respond. Yes. Yeah, I, think, I think one more factor let me put in here. We talk about Atma Nirbhar Bharat. What is fascinating is that this, this year, our import, our uh, imports from China has hit 100 billion US dollars. Now, we have friction with China in the borders, but we have massive imports from China. What are we importing? We're importing electronic products, we're importing electrical products, all the fundamental chips in our economy. Now, question is, how do you become Atma Nirbhar when you're China Nirbhar? 
Now, I didn't hear a word in the budget on how to ma manage this in the middle of the conflict with China, including Goldman Heights, uh, Goldman in 21, we were doing that. By the way, Chinese economy is going to go by, grow by 5%, which means that approximately, I made an estimate, it's an 18 tr trillion dollar economy, going by 5% would be uh, almost four times that of our 6.5% growth. We have to be careful of that. But I did not hear a word in the budget. Only Atmanira, big talk, all kinds of nice talk. But where is it that we can substantively show a path? Mr. Kant, do you, want to, we... do you want to take on that point uh, about, about the Atmanirbharta point that, that Dr. Mitra is making? And also, I, I mean, I'm just yeah, yeah. trying to take off on a larger point from there that uh, uh, you, there is a concern that India's exports are also hit at the moment. The global economy is facing these headwinds. Uh, the depreciation yeah. of the rupee, high inflation. Yeah. Uh, how do we deal with all those factors as we look to increase growth? Yeah. Uh, so let me first respond to uh, Mr. Mitra on that point, uh, because uh, we are in a globalized economy. Uh, our exports grew last year overall. Uh, in fact, they grew in a big way. There is an import intensity to exports. You are a integral part of global value chains. If you do not import, you can't export many products. You've seen our mobile ex uh, manufacturing exports have grown enormously, but they have an import component. Uh, you know, different parts of a mobile are manufactured in different parts of the world. And same thing with capital goods, etc. I don't, to my mind, it's not the essential imports which are a worry. The issue is about non-essential imports which should be manufactured in India. And I think the government has taken a series of measures both through tariff and both and through production linked incentive schemes to drive manufacturing in India. Much of this result you'll start seeing as you're seeing in electronic and mobile manufacturing, you'll start seeing in many other areas of growth in due, in due course. Uh, the other question that you asked me was about uh, headwinds across the world, etc. Yes, there are headwinds. But every crisis, to my mind, is an opportunity. What the budget has done is, despite several crises in the world, is to look at opportunities, that this is a time to do energy transition, this is a time to go for green hydrogen, this is a time to really use to push digitization in the economy, which India has done. There's been enormous breakthroughs. Uh, we do about 11x uh, fast uh, digital payments compared right. to 11x more than what Europe and America does. We do 4x more than China. These are huge achievements. India should be proud about these achievements. Dr. Mitra, uh, yeah. you know, are you being unnecessarily pessimistic? I take the point that you're saying about the need to look after those who are the most needy. But each of the points that... Amitabh speaks about whether it's digitization of the economy, the transition to a green economy, um, you know, uh, specific areas of excellence. Uh, for example, the IT server services sector, right? No, Are these not yeah, things yeah. that you should be, you know, I mean, praising? No, no. I'll give you an example, practical example. TCS, Tata Consulting Service, number one IT company in India, is employing right now in West Bengal, 55,000 people in Kolkata. People don't know that. Number two, I was very saddened when I heard the MSME question. What the probably people do not know is uh, small and medium enterprise lending is done at the state level banking committees of which I chair. We, have, we are number one in India in terms of MSME lending from the state level. I was also very unhappy that the budget talked about SAG, self-help groups of women, 98% women who pay back very well. When we, when our government came to office, there were 1 lakh SAG. No, but, but, but Dr. Women. Mitra, that respectfully, you aren't answering my question. Lakhs today. Dr. Mitra, respectfully, yeah. and I'm sure you've, you know, you've yeah. got lots of points you're making, but what uh, Amitabh Khan speaks about, whether it is that green transition, whether it is a digitization and all those other data points, on these aspects of the budget, that we need to be praising irrespective of political I, or let, party affiliation. Let me, let me submit to you that budget has many components to it. And who can disagree that we need a hydrogen economy? Who, which, which person will disagree? 
question is one of prioritization it's a zero sum game you have 100 rupees you have to allocate it in a balanced manner all i'm saying is you do keynesian stimulation macroeconomics 101 parallelly you do massive amount of investment process which will take time you have a balance in that what i find this budget is a rah rah budget which says we'll do this which which is represented very well by mr khan and his conversation today i am saying let's go to the grassroots level balance the process okay. yes we need to uh, do transition by the way you will need 4 trillion us dollars a year for the transition in the world according to uh, conservatively speaking per year so transition is not something sure. that will happen just all right like dr that. khan would you like to last oh. comment from you respond to that uh, do we have that yeah. 4 trillion to make no, vishnu yes. what no vishnu what grass what grassroot transformation are we talking about i i have you know i was a small part of the aspirational district program where we transformed 112 district where west bengal did not even participate and today the budget has announced the 500 aspirational blocks which is a hardcore grassroots transformational program now this budget is not political this budget is not populist it's a transformational budget it makes a paradigm shift in our growth strategy it it's a budget for building a new india of tomorrow all right i think i must say that you know these are very nice conversations i would suggest to mr khan go and get elected understand the grassroots level because that I... gives you a real feel and that what that will do for you is perhaps this conversation will become little different my submission today is balance the process immediate you need 5 uh, crore people 50 lakh people to be saved from the uh, from the terrible All situation right. okay gentlemen is. let's leave it let's leave it over there i don't think amitabh has any intention of of oh, being elected Vish, i think he no, works at a different no, level v- vishnu i'm sure no, he vishnu, can vishnu you not? can you can no no you can you can play a role in the development of a country Uh, in different ways right no no i, I accept that point i don't think you necessarily the, have to as a part of be elected and, and i suspect yeah. that dr mitra would uh, would accept yeah. that point as and well it, but thank you gentlemen and i think it's, it's a it and a, and i think it's an unfair comment right. to be made okay i i i all right let's leave it over there gentlemen thank you so much uh, and i think it's it's been a it's it's been a wonderful uh, sort of conversation over there looking at various aspects of models of development